Okay, so I am going to do this video for anybody that may be going into Shorelander trailers to load. And uh, I'm just going to kind of go, this is the first load out of there, uh, everything. Now, they what they'll do is for all of those trailers, they'll put all of the winches on a pallet. And they uh, use these uh, metal banding straps to uh, hold everything down. And then, you know, you'll just need to like strap going across. And uh, the cardboard next time, I'd take the cardboard off because it rained a lot and it just kind of like looks like crap. But anyway, so I have seven trailers, okay? I've got four down here low that are three axle trailers. And then I've got three more up there that are two axle trailers. Um, basically, you're going to need at least six of these short, they're six hole uprights or two foot uprights, however you want to look at it. You'll need six of the six foot uprights, okay, and you'll also need at least six extensions to get high enough to load the last three boats. So first of all, I'm just going to do kind of a walk around before I get to the strapping. So there's the other. And then you'll need uh, six of the crossbars. Okay, now I'm just single cupping. All right, they're not that heavy, you know, all together. Uh, this is where the second six foot upright and extension is placed. So we're uh, one, two, three, four holes from the front of the uh, axles back here. And then the final six foot upright with extension and crossbars. A lot of straps. And as you're noticing, uh, the straps are not going the same way as if we had boats on. Like if this bottom trailer were a boat, normally we would strap back here and go forward with that strap. You can't do it because the other trailers are all in the way. So uh, you've got to pull from each direction. And uh, there's the other upright, short upright there. And I know I'm walking fast, but if you kind of like need to look at something, you can just pause it. And I'll, I'll, I'm gonna slow down now that I'm uh, getting to the strapping part. So like I said, you can't like, strap here and pull backwards because all of this all of this all of this everything is in the way fenders trailer all of that so what you're going to do is on each trailer you're going to find a place to hook and you're going to pull away away from the trailer on this end and the other end okay so there's my first trailer okay this bottom one here and you can see I used the O-ring straps or axle straps or tire straps, whatever you want to call them, on the first one. But then they told me, oh, you don't need to do that. Just hook the hooks to it and I'll show you. So I have them coming straight down here and hooking onto the I-beam, okay? Then I have trailer number two. Or sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the first trailer, okay? And I have it going right up there. I got carpet around there to protect my strap. Not that it's gonna hurt. And this is the first trailer. And I've got it coming down here. Second trailer is the one that I showed you initially. And the straps are coming down there, okay? Third trailer. It's just the same thing on each trailer, except they reverse them. So the first trailer is pointed uh, that way. Second trailer is pointed this way. Third that way. Fourth that way. And so on. So they just, they're reversing the straps. Okay. So you can see kind of like on the front of the trailers, you can hook to that little bar right there. Okay. On the back of the trailers... 
you'll see there's several little places right up there that you can hook to and just use your uh, use the carpet to protect your strap okay here's one like you can see where I went in there you could go there you could go to this one either way it doesn't matter any of those locations will uh, accept your hook you can hook to it and then come down and again carpet you know just for protecting my strap and uh, then it goes down down to there so like I said I'm pulling all of my straps like you can see that one way up there if I kind of zoom in a little bit to that little bar all of the trailers have that little bar that you can just kind of hook your straps to okay now the only issue I really had was on that tall the very last trailer up there my straps weren't long enough okay to even come here or to come down to the trailer so basically what I did is I just you can see right here I hooked two straps together I took the ratchet end up there the other ratchet end down here and then just tightened up both ends now once it got tight I didn't have to climb up there to take any slack out of that one I just did it all down here on this one okay so I'm going back I'm gonna to go to the back and we'll look at the strapping back there um, for anybody that pulled any other trailers with us you know they were never really loaded well okay but I want you to see how well that they they use these big like four by six chunks on the bottom they go all the way across hold on let me go down here all the way across to the other side okay then they've got these four by six chunks these are all nail gunned together then they have another one with three two by sixes all nailed together okay then they come back with these bands these metal bands here and they band this wood to that trailer down there okay so that metal band is going to keep this piece of wood from moving okay they do that all the way up on every trailer now here's the thing here okay what about side to side movement well their u-bolts right here are the width of these two by sixes there's one on the inside one on the outside you can see over there hold on let me see if I can zoom in you see there's another u-bolt there okay so as long as these two by sixes are nailed really well and they don't move then this trailer is not going to want to go side to side because the u-bolts are catching on this side and the other side of the two by sixes so you can see how much bigger the wood and how they load it then when it's all done okay they come back and they band this band here the trailers together okay so a lot more banding and bigger wood is being used than used to be used on uh, the other trailers that we used to load up here all the fronts are going to be like this so you've got the two by sixes which are nailed together but then they're double band metal banding okay to keep it nice and tight so you know as you're doing your walk around you see there's another board that goes all the way across and metal bands and then you know metal bands again these trailers haven't moved an inch left or right and none of the wood has slipped and I've gone I don't know 2,000 and something miles not saying that it won't I'm just saying it hasn't yet but you know you got to keep your straps tight so here we go in the back now this is the bottom trailer I'm coming down to my trailer that's trailer one this is trailer two here okay I'm coming down here now when I first ran my straps I had a lot of crisscrossing and all of that and I actually went back and redid the way I strapped it so they would be more in a line like that and much easier to get to the ratchets 
you know when you do need to tighten now all in all I have uh, only been able to get a couple of clicks out of some of the straps mostly this long one in the front and back here that I had to hook together to get all the way up to that top one okay they they kind of loosened up just because of the extra length but once I got the straps tight I didn't have to go back and just keep clicking and clicking and clicking I check them every time I stop okay every time I stop but my point with that is these trailers have rested very well on top of each other and they're not moving around which is why my straps once I got the stretch out of them I haven't been able to get clicks out because these trailers just aren't moving okay so here again is uh, how they've got them stacked and then you see the metal band right there how it goes up and around the tread they do that on all the trailers so these things are really stuck together got plenty of clearance down here I ended up being right at 12 foot 8 inches I measured that um, that fender right there which they told me is the highest point but I, I'm really kind of questioning if that jack stand up there is not just a wee bit higher even if it's two or three inches higher you're still well under 13 6 okay so now the other good thing no tires okay with the other people we did their trailers you had a lot of tires to stock uh, stack up in different places uh, these trailers uh, Ranger Tug and Cutwater they get the tires from a place in Oregon so you'll never have to haul the tires with you they'll have the tires up there they told me at the factory uh, you know when you unload um, they do one trailer at a time it's a little time consuming there's some climbing you know that has to happen to get up there and hook your straps and, and, and all of that but overall it's good exercise okay um, I'm gonna pause for a second okay um, so basically you're gonna need a minimum bare minimum of uh, 28 straps okay you got seven trailers four on each trailer minimum so that's 28 okay now the reason I didn't go over the tongue on every trailer was I wanted to see how they were riding how the trailers were riding okay they ride really well but that doesn't mean we don't need to do that I think we should and the next load I get I'm going to but I just kind of wanted to do this as a test I'll also probably go up here and run a strap around the uh, very top trailer and then come straight down to uh, the trailer here or you know maybe here or something like that just to kind of sandwich them and keep a little bit they haven't been really rocking left and right but you know it would prevent that so I'm just gonna do another walk around here's all the winches on a big pallet okay see if I can get back far enough to where I can do the whole load without having to put the phone up and down and up and down to see it but The, oh, the one thing, too, uh, that you're going to want to watch. They, they load these with a forklift using some chains. Okay. Now, I was on the driver's side. The other guy, John, was over here on the passenger side. So when they come down on top of the next trailer, okay, you have to... I, it, it's my fault. I should have walked over and looked at this side. But... I knew that my fenders were inside my trailer on the other side 
and I'm asking John, how does it look over there? How does it look? And he's like, oh, it's fine, it's fine. But actually, he ended up, if you look, okay, I'm a couple of inches over on these two trailers. This, this trailer right down here, maybe an inch, you know, but this one up here is sticking out a little bit further. Uh, it hasn't moved, you know, over any, but still, uh, the, the getting the trailer centered m might be, you know, a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it just, just take a few extra minutes. I should have done that and uh, just get them, get them right, you know? So, all right, there you go. Shore or float on. I think I said Shorelander earlier. These are float on trailers and we're picking them up out of uh, Vero Beach, Florida. All right. Most of you should have my phone number. If you have any other questions, give me a call.